Why genetic engineering? Well, the original purpose is greater good. And they're not frankenfoods exactly, uh, because really we're not taking the best parts like merging an apricot and a plum that's done genetically and having a plum cot from its DNA. So it's not just sewing two things together, but it's done at the DNA level, engineering the DNA. Um, so the idea originally is resistant crops, virus resistance, insect resistance, or herbicide resistance, even crops that are healthier and can grow better or taste better. Having the ability to grow crops under harsher conditions will in fact be more important with the climate change issues the world is facing. Other things that can help and have already helped are growing medications in bacteria, which will be needed not just for human insulin, but also uh, for developing vaccines or any other new pathogens that arise. Another thing facing the future will be growing biofuels like in soybeans. As with everything, there are pros and cons. One argument is that this is not natural. And against it, this has happened in nature. There's evidence that sweet potatoes incorporated bacterial DNA into their genome about 8,000 years ago. It's not normal, but it has happened. One concern is allergens and cancer from GMOs. So far, there is no medical evidence and the evidence so far is merely anecdotal for allergens. There are tight FDA regulations on all lab-created foods, and so far there has been no medical evidence against genetically modified foods. Another con that's been brought up is that GMOs cause farmers to overuse pesticides and herbicides. Well, actually, there's been reduced reliance on herbicides due to that Roundup-ready corn or BT corn that makes its own insecticide. GMOs create super insects and super weeds. This is actually valid. There is evidence that weeds have evolved in response to the herbicide resistant crops. So these are more herbicide resistant as a result, or super weeds. Farmers can't replant GMO seeds. And this is also valid. So it costs farmers more money to buy those seeds that are Roundup ready, the herbicide resistant corn. And Monsanto basically charges farmers more for these specially created herbicide resistant Roundup ready seeds. There are also new aspects of genetic engineering, like gene therapy down the road could create designer DNA and also includes ethical considerations behind cloning and stem cell research. CRISPR technology allows for very selective DNA editing, like shown here. You can literally take out very specific sections of nucleotide bases, and that has been used on human embryos illegally, but is something that down the road could be misused. Whether we like it or not, GMOs are already common in the U.S. 92% of corn, 94% of soy, and 94% of cotton are GMOs. So this is separate from organic labeling. Non-GMO project is voluntary on the part of the companies that produce these products. Why do companies put this label on there voluntarily? Similar to recycling, appeal to anyone who has their GMO concerns. What are the potential risks of genetic engineering? Well, it can be argued that the benefits all outweigh the risks in terms of the benefits of nutrition and vaccines and medications already in use. GMO crops are controversial and have been called frankenfoods because they're created from the best parts of different species and organisms. 